So the molecular scripts add-on is a really cool thing you can use and try out in Blender for fun, even if you're not going to try and make anything serious with it. So in this tutorial, I'll quickly go over it so we can make this sort of thing here where we have a jelly cube thing and we slice and split it in half. I'll show you where to download it. So if you think this is something you, know, you want to try out, uh, by all means, uh, keep watching the tutorial. We're going to be using Blender 3.0. Um, I'll briefly touch on just lighting and materials towards the end. This is not really what the tutorial is about. It's more just the actual um, simulation itself and the little chop slice thing. Uh, so let's get right into it. And the blend files will be on my Patreon. You can check that in the description. So getting your hands on a molecular script add-on, it's quite simple. I'll put a link in the description below to the GitHub page. You're just going to find the latest build. In this case, it's the molecular for Blender 2.93, which by the way, will work in Blender 3.0. I'm not sure if it will get any bugs so far. I haven't had any issues. So go ahead and just download the zip folder that's relevant to your machine. So if you've got Windows, Linux, Mac, that's pretty cool. It has all three of them there. So download the zip folder. Don't extract the zip. No need to do that. Okay, so once you're in Blender, what you're going to do is just go to Edit, Preferences, go to your Add-ons, click on Install, and just find that zip folder wherever it is on your computer. So I've already done that. Um, so I have a dedicated Blender Add-ons folder that I've just added somewhere on my computer. And there it is, the Molecular um, scripts add-on, you're just going to click on it and you're going to go install add-on. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. But obviously once you've done that, there should be an option for it here. If you don't see it, just type in MOL for molecular and you should see here physics, molecular. Make sure the box is ticked and then just close. No need to save. Blender does it automatically. Okay, so now we can get into the actual fun stuff. So let's use our default cube here and let's go to our particles. We're going to click on the plus and we're going to give it a particle system. And generally we would generate particles over time. So you can see here if I hit the space bar, in this case, we all want them just to exist right up front. So we're going to come here to under our mission, come to our end frame value, and we're going to set that to one. So literally they started one and they ended one. Um, the lifetime here, that's really relevant to how long you want your animation. So obviously, if you want to cache out a particle simulation to frame 120, but you leave the lifetime on 50, your particles are just going to disappear at frame 50. So for me, I'm going to go with 120 for this tutorial. Uh, you guys can make that longer or shorter depending on how much time you want to spend processing it. And then we're going to come here to the source. And the source is really important. So we're going to come to the emit from and instead of having it in faces or verts, we're going to go to volume and the way it's going to be distrib distributed, the method is going to be grid instead of um, random. So you can't see anything, but if you hit Z and you go wireframe, you should see in there we have these points that are generated. Now, by default, we don't want to, um, that's just what you see, but we actually wanted to reference an object. A good object for that, it can be any mesh object, but um, we're going to go with an icosphere because they, um, they're nice and round and they work good. So we're going to go shift A, we're going to go to our mesh options and let's add in an icosphere. You can bring down the subdiv, by the way, if you need to, if you're getting a lot of lag, but um, I'm just going to go with the default two there and we're going to go G and just move your icosphere off to the side. It can be anywhere. You can put it on another collection. It's, we're not going to be actually seeing it. It's just going to be referenced. So we're going to click on the particle, um, the cube here, under our particle settings, under the source. Um, so we're going to just scroll down a little bit to the render. And the render as, at the moment, it's set to halo. Um, you can say, for example, if I change it to line, you can see it changes. But what we're going to do is change it to object. And then we're going to come down to the object options here. And the instancer is going to be that icosphere. So you can just click here and find icosphere. And what we're also going to do is we're going to go to viewport display and we're going to make sure display as is set to rendered. For some reason, it wasn't in a grid configuration just then. It was at random, but then all of a sudden it just changed to a grid. I don't know why there was a bit of a lag like that, but you should be seeing it like this. So all the settings are exactly what we've just done. So it's referencing that icosphere there and under the viewport display, it should just be set as rendered. Okay, so now obviously you're noticing that these particles are kind of sparse, right? So that's where... Um, Obviously, if you're happy with the size of the particles, first of all, um, you can first of all look at under the render, the scale here. We're going to leave it as it is, but we want to make the resolution more. So what we're going to do is come up back to our source, and that's where we have that here. So we're going to go to the resolution, and we're going to type in 30. And you can see it's populated it quite densely, but our 
particle is too big. So what we could do is maybe make it 25. And we can see it's not, um, we're not getting too much overlap, but let's bring it down to 20 or even 21. And we can see that's a lot better. All right, so you can see what happens when we increase that, they start going through each other. Now, if you wanted smaller particles and you wanted more resolution, um, say for example, we did put it at 30, you can go down to the scale and you can bring that down. So 0 0.03, for example, it's now smaller and you can see it's populating that and we don't have any overlap. You can hold in shift and just left click on that scale and then you can slowly drag it in increments, but just make sure you don't get any overlap. So I think something like 0 0.023 and a resolution of 30 works really good for the default cube here. Okay, so now we have it populated with the particles in the right grid setup. So let's just place our cube. So just make sure you're on frame one. We're gonna go G, Z and hold in control and it should just snap at a certain point. So let's snap it right to the grid floor there. We're gonna go shift A, let's add in a plane. And if the plane active, we're just gonna hit S to scale it. And whenever you scale something that's gonna be involved with particles, make sure it's active, go control A, apply that scale. If you don't do that, you're gonna have explosions and your particles are gonna go completely bonkers. So now select the cube again. And under our particles here, we just wanna make sure, um, so the emitter here is in our way. So we can go under the render, just go show emitter and get rid of it. And we can also come to the viewport display and get rid of show emitter. So you won't see it in your render or inside of your viewport, which is cool. So now we just see it like it is. You can see they're not smooth shaded. So you can also just quickly select your icosphere, right click and then go shade smooth. And now we can see we have that. So we have everything in place, but we don't have the actual physics. So let's minimize our emitter here, emission and our render, our viewport. And let's go over to, I think force field settings and let's go enable self effect. That's gonna be important. Then we can minimize that. We're now gonna to go to our actual molecular script. So we click on that, come to the drop down, and let's go to dense simulate. Now eventually we can come here to the sub steps. Now the sub steps the lower they are, um, the the more your particles are just gonna go everywhere, like sand. The higher you bring that sub step level up, the more they're gonna kind of stick together like a solid mass. Um, I'll get this is by no means i um, like gonna go in depth to what all this stuff is. We're just doing a basic tutorial today. So just leave that for now. Um, um, we're not gonna talk about UVs or anything like that. We'll do that in a future tutorial. Let's go to density. At this one, we're gonna go calculate particle weight by density. It does it pretty quickly. We're gonna go to the preset here and let's make that iron. You can make it sand or whatever. We're just gonna go with iron. Um, we're gonna now go to our collision. And the important one here is activate self collision. If you did this one here, activate collision with others, that's if you had other particle systems inside of here and they need to interact. But since it's just one system, all we need is self collision within that system. We can now go to links and we're gonna go activate particle linking. And then we can come here to the initial linking at birth. And let's set that search up to five. Now, if you set that lower, so what you'll notice, the lower you set that search thing, the less particles it's searching for around itself or having influence over. So you'll find that it that all kind of just sags like a big pile of jelly. And the higher you set that search radius, the stiffer it'll kind of become. Um, once again, we'll get into that in more detail, but for now, just something like four or five should be okay for what we're doing. And um, that should be about it. So let's now just quickly select our floor here. Um, obviously we needed to interact with the floor. So with the floor active, go to your physics, give it a simple collision. And we actually are gonna come here just to the friction and make that 35. And that should be good for that. Make sure you save as you go. Very important when you're working with particles um, because it can crash. And then we're gonna select the actual um, system here, back to our, go back to our um, particle settings. And now what we can do is we can click on start molecular simulation. Now at the moment, it'll do it all the way to 250. So I'm gonna set mine to 120. Okay, I only want 120. And then I'm gonna go Control S, just make sure to save. And if you've been following along, you can now click Start Molecular Simulation. Okay, I've just stopped it at about 40 frames in just to see what it's looking like. Okay, that, that's that's okay for now. I'm pretty happy with that. If it's too saggy, you want a bit more, be a bit more rigid, you can just go under simulate to free all bakes, bump this up to something like 12, 
in the sub steps and then just start the molecular simulation again. And I just quickly stopped it again. I just went a few frames in, but this time you can see it is a lot more rigid. So it really just depends on what sort of effect you want. So maybe I'll just change that to more like something like nine and just free all the bakes again. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just add in a little slicer. And so we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. Actually, let's add in a cube. So we're gonna go shift A, add in a cube. S, X, and flatten that cube on the X. Make it nice and thin. G, Z, and bring it up. And maybe a little bit flatter. So S, X again, just make it nice and flat like a blade. Then you're gonna go Control A, apply the scale, that's really important. Tab into edit mode, and what we're gonna do, Control R, just roll in some extra loops like that. Control R, roll in some extra ones like that. Go to your right orthographic view or your front orthographic view in this case. Just select these verts down here and enable proportional editing. S, X, and just flatten that a little bit at the tip just to make it sharp. And then disable that again. So now we have a nice blade. And what we can do is just move it over just a little bit. Shift D, X, duplicate another one. And then make sure both of these blades are active. Come to frame one. Hit I and insert a location and a rotation. Come to frame 10. Hit I, insert a location and a rotation just so we have a 10 second hold or a 10 frame hold, I should say. And then we're gonna come to frame 60 or maybe 55. So let's come to frame 55 and we're gonna go G, Z and just bring that down. Don't worry about what the particles are doing in the viewport. We haven't um, baked them yet. So we're gonna bring it down to about the floor. Make sure they don't go through the floor. Then we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. And let's come to frame 90. R, Z and rotate them on the Z just a little bit. Then go I, insert location and rotation. And if them both still active, you're just gonna to come to the very first keyframe, just select it. Shift D, drag it all the way to 120 so it goes back to where it started. So the blades are gonna do this. Okay, don't worry about it not interacting. We haven't baked anything out yet. Okay, so that looks really cool. But even cooler, what you can do at about frame 90, what you can do is you can part them. So at frame 90, you can grab one of them and you can go G, move it out, hit I, insert location rotation, grab the other one and then move that out and then go I, insert location rotation. So now they're going to part like that a little bit. Experiment, see what you guys like, but just try it all out. So what we're gonna do once we're happy, make sure you select both of those objects, go to your physics, give both of them a collision, both of the blades, otherwise they won't interact. And now make sure to save, and we can now select our cube. So make sure you have it active. Go to frame one, and then we can go to our particles, and let's go down to our molecular script and click on start molecular simulation. Okay, so the simulation is now done baking. So let's have a look at that. Pretty cool. And we haven't refined any of the settings and stuff like that. This is just showing you how to make some cool stuff with the particles. In the future, I'll do a more advanced um, tutorial on this. We're going more detail, talk about textures, materials, UVs and stuff like that. But that's it. So um, what I did is I also just gave the, um, the main particle that's being referenced or the icosphere its own material. So just make sure you're in cycles. Um, just go new material, give it something like an orange. And then go select the blades. You can give them their own material. Make sure they both have that same material. Oops, I just gave the cube a material. Make sure both the blades have the same material. You can give that material a metallic value. Make it a little bit more reflective by bringing down the roughness. Go to your world settings and then you can just go to your color here. Give it a sky texture. And now if you hit Z and then go rendered, you should see this. Hit zero to go into your camera. And you can select your camera to make it active. You can hit G to move your camera. And if you have a GPU, make sure to use it. You can probably hear my CPU in the background. It really doesn't like this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, once you've changed that to GPU, you can come to denoising, enable render and then change that to optics 
And now if you render, you should have good denoising as well. But this is not really a material tutorial or anything like this. Um, this is just showing you guys how to, um, to do some fun stuff with molecular, um, the molecular script add-on. So maybe I'll just quickly grab those blades, just go into the shading workspace. Uh, let's see what we can do. Just make the materials look a little bit cooler. With the metal here, I'll just make that a little bit darker. The value. That looks pretty cool. Um, you can select the sky. You can go to the sky settings here and bring that strength down to 0.3. It is a little bit intense. And you can also just select your um, particle or your icosphere. And if you want to make it look really cool, you can actually go shift A, search, just get an a object info. And then just take the random output, plug it into the base color. Shift A, search and get a color ramp and plug it on that cable. And then you can use these sliders here. You can give them their own colors, whatever you want to do. You know, make it look really cool. Try different things out. Oh, that looks pretty cool. So yeah, that, that's been how to do this. Um, so that's how I made that little animation. Um, pretty satisfying. See what you guys can do to do with this. And like I said, I will be making a more advanced tutorial in the future that goes more in depth to what the different things do and how to solve some of the issues where they kind of bounce around and, and things like that. But if you've enjoyed this, um, please give a like and subscribe. Check out some of my other content. And I definitely appreciate all of those of you who have been a support on the Patreon. Uh, that's really helped me out a lot. I'll see you guys next time and stay safe.